so if you remember the frame um, from the beginning of this project, the uh, had these three big holes in the back here that have been over drilled. So I've drilled them out to make them a bit bigger. And I've made these three collars on the lathe of different sizes to insert into them. And now I'm going to weld them in around there and then grind them down to give us the correct sized holes. Um, I've checked the alignment as best as I can and I've made this little holder which slots in. Now this does two things. One helps me keep them straight while I'm welding them and two it retains the shape of the hole and um, will take some of the heat out of it hopefully stop any damage and I'm doing this now because I'm gonna to have to rotate the frame a few times in order to weld it uh, and I want to put the engine in this of course so I can start up the engine and fiddle around with that and just test it so once I've done this we can then get on with the other parts and just before we move on you can see one that I've tacked in there and one that's ground down that's good enough it's only really a spacer so right move on okay so we're going to do the paint um the aging effect and i'm going to have some paint crackle and a bit of rust patches on this bike to age it and i've used um ipa which is an alcohol so it evaporates quickly and mixed it with some salt crystals to a sort of slushy sort of snow type texture i'm just going to dab it on in random patches and the alcohol should evaporate leaving the uh, ice crystals behind, in this case, or salt crystals. Let's do quite a big patch, shall we? It's just a test piece here, and we'll see how it comes out. Hopefully they'll stick to the uh, sheet a bit. Thanks to Rob for this one. Right, there we go. Let's just leave that for... About 10 minutes or so. A bit more of bloop on there. There we go, let's try that. So we just leave that now to dry and then we'll give it a lick of paint and see how it looks. I'm gonna do something quite soft so it doesn't um, it doesn't look like you scratch the paint as such. There you go, the rest of that will just peel off naturally. There you go, that's about what we want. So let's get started with the frame. Okay, we're on to the bit I like most and that's painting the frame um, and all the other parts. Um, right, we're gonna do the whole distress look as I said um, before and I'll show you the salt effect in a minute for paint, uh, peeling paint. But first of all, I'm gonna do the underside of the bike which isn't gonna have any um, distressed effect to it. So I'm going to get a thick layer underneath it just because that gets chipped quite a lot. And then once we've got that on there, I'm going to mix a few other bits and bobs, some salt effect and some paint peel and those kind of things. And then finally, the top coat. There we go. Looks a bit yellow in the shade, but there we go. It's a, it's a 10 to 15% um, gloss within the mat. So it's somewhere, but uh, satin is typically about um, 30 to 40% to give you some idea. And a duck egg or an eggshell effect is probably about 20, so it's just slightly under an eggshell effect in terms of finish. I had to stop recording because the sun switched the camera off because it got too hot, but you can see here that we've got some uh, salt flake on there. I actually just tried it with sugar. It seems to work just as well. thought it might be less corrosive should it ever breach it. Um, I'm going to put a little bit more. It's a bit around this side that I haven't painted yet. There we go. And I'm just going to put some black on as well, just to give it a bit of texture. And that will also make the, uh, the top coat come out a bit darker. Um, okay, so it's all done now. It's all completely painted. So I'll put a zoom in for you. That's how it looks. Um, right, so next up, we let it dry for about um, 20 minutes, half an hour or so. And then I'm going to put um, a few accents of black, uh, a little bit of red. And then finally, I'm going to mix some more top coat and give it a slight sheen 
to um, just to detail some of the high wear areas. Okay, you can have a look closer up now. Just how it's going to stay for a minute. And now, finally, we're just going to go over it with um, a very thin coat of paint. So uh, it's watered down by about 60% thinner, something like that. So the last job at this phase is just to scrape off the salt and sugar over here. Credit card or something, it works fine. There you go, give that all a good scrape off over. Um, and then we'll be left with these patches, which give you that kind of realistic uh, worn paint depth. And in here you can just see some of the sort of black colouring coming through as well. And likewise down there. Um, which I can then work with later on when we um, when I go around and finish it. Once the frame's assembled, I'm going to then go over and do all the detailing and the aging and things like that. So I've just tried pure sugar on this, and it definitely works better than salt. It's much easier um, to get bigger patches on. It might look like it's just the odd crystal, but um, the paint underneath was on a salt, uh, sugary fluid, so it won't stick either. So we should get some nice little burger-sized patches. So what I'm going to do now is, um, like I did in the other on the frame, um, I gave it a nice thick base coat of uh, the final colour, and now I've just splattered a bit of try and get shit on there, a bit of black and red dusting, and I've mixed up now some of the top coat with um, about 75% thinners. And I'm just going to lick over it and then that you should be able to see that black and the red come through it, make it look like it's worn a bit more. Right, so if you look up close now you can see the, um, the black shows through underneath. Almost like rust spots forming. Gives a bit of texture to the paint. Obviously, again, we'll wipe off all this sugar later. You get the rough idea. <laughs> 